for a time series, and today I want to just we'll talk about time and data analysis. And uh, when doing data analysis, um, clearly, uh, we don't have a time dimension to do it. Edgar Anderson recorded measurements on his three species of viruses, and never included time of day or uh, when those observations were made. And uh, but that's the only stopped us from enjoying those 150 timeless observations. There's other times, though, when uh, the time dimension is an important piece of information. It gives us uh, a distance between observations. Not perfect distance, but um, there's often times when uh, humans are part of the data and they do interesting things on specific dates and specific times. Uh, we some turkeys on Thanksgiving and then we go shopping the day after that, and then uh, a few weeks later we uh, exchange gifts and then on New Year's we do certain things. So, um, time, uh, the, the time series package is a lightweight package designed for data analysis when time matters. So, just to go over quickly what the package design is, it's kind of a stingy code base. It's only got 500 lines of code. And this actually includes the uh, empty lines as well. Um, it's based around a time array, uh, which is an immutable type to work with time series data. It includes um, three elements. Timestamp, which, which is a vector of date. It was originally, uh, it's gone through a few permutations, but date is um, dates.jl, which is eventually going to make it to base, I guess. Uh, values, which is specified type, <coughs> and then column names, which is the vector of string. Uh, the um, invariants that we enforce are the length has to match the, uh, the rows for the timestamp, and the column has to match the size of the column. Those are obvious. Also, dates cannot be duplicated, and which isn't true in other packages. And also, dates can't be in some sort of random, unsorted order. Constructor also enforces that the um, rows start with the first observation happening first. So to give a quick API tour, uh, I'm using the market data uh, package here. You can, you can get that by package <coughs> market data. Um, OHLC is the open high low close prices for Apple computer um, from 2000, January to 2001, uh, December, at the end of December. And you can see there's 500 observations, and uh, which is the open high low close prices. Um, so the columns are indexed by string. So if we want to close, we would just pass in a uh, string in the square brackets and we would get the close. If we um, rows, we can be indexed by date and date rows. Uh, so this is similar to other packages as well. So if we put in the square brackets a specific date, we'll get that date. And if we put a range of dates, um, we'll get a range of those dates that include that phrase that we pass to it. We can also um, index rows by integers and integer ranges. So the first observation would be one, and uh, first through third observation would be uh, the first three. And you can also um, simultaneously index those. So if you're just lazy and you want to get open close and you just want the first through third observation plus the twelfth um, observation, you can do something like that. Uh, there's uh, other methods that you can use to subset between specific dates. Um, from is Kind of like a tail in R, it's from the date to the end of the of data set, and two is from the beginning of the data set uh, to the value that you pass into it. And you can see that's just um, positional arguments. 2000, comma, 1, comma, 5 is um, obviously 2001, January 5th. So if you want to do between, you can just use both of them to do that. You can also agree on a specific time period. If you just want the Mondays, you can say by, uh, pass in your um, your object and one happens to represent Mondays. Period is going to be day of the week. And you can also collapse um, on larger time frames to, a, or from small, um, from granular daily to like monthly data. And doing that, we um, use a collapse method. Um, now the close, um, there's 22 observations or so in January, so you have to pick one of those or average them or do something. So we're passing a function as the second argument, and that's the last observation. That makes sense for the close and the period there is the month. Um, element wise, operations are supported. Um, and there's a comparative operator. And um, when you want to find a certain condition that's met, let's say you want to see all the profitable days in your data set, the green days, say, well, I want to find when um, the open high low close is greater than the open high low is open. Um, so after you do that, you can see that the type of green days is actually an array of date. Pass that into open, high, low, close, and you'll get all the dates. Get the, basically, a new time array with all that, those values. And besides using find when, there's find all, which I think will probably be faster. Um, you can see it, it actually returns 
an array of int, and you can pass that as well into your um, square brackets. Um, some time really transformations are very common. Lag is also called shift in other languages. And you've taken the first observation and shifted it down a day. Uh, that's something common that you would use in, uh, in, in time series packages. Percent change is uh, obviously just a change between the two periods. Um, moving creates a window. So the 20-day um, moving average here is basically what this is. And you can see that we've gotten a 481 row uh, object from 500. So we've consumed 19 rows to get the first value. And those 19 rows have disappeared on us. Up to is, um, it takes the first observation up to whatever row you're on. So if you're taking the one through third observation, you're going to sum, in this example, the sum of uh, the first three rows. Um, it's not that fast, and there's actually a faster method to accumulate sum. So um, I've included a base call uh, method, and that allows you to call a base um, method on your, um, on your object as well. So I got a VA close here, is Boeing closing prices, it's 13,000 rows, and I timed it with up to, and you can see the time there, uh, 0 0.09 seconds, and then I timed it with base call using the come sum uh, method that's available, and we got a tenfold improvement using that. So uh, merging two time arrays, this is quite very pretty, but it does work kind of. It's um, merging uh, the Boeing high prices with the Caterpillar low prices. <coughs> You see 13,000 rows. It, it does its job, but it takes quite a bit of time to do it. It takes 1.8, or one, yeah, pretty much 1.8 seconds. So the problems with it, it's slow. Uh, column names aren't unique. Uh, that's probably something that doesn't fix. And uh, right now, only inner joins are supported. Uh, so then we were talking about NAs earlier, earlier and NANs earlier. So if something happens when time disappears, uh, time series does not uh, preserve artifact dates. So um, this is what happens when dates are consumed by computation shifting. And this is originally going to be what happens to dates. This is my brain when I'm thinking about NA sometimes. This goes in this call. But uh, here what, here's what happened. Open, high, low, close. Remember the first observation was, was um, the open price was 104.88. You can see that. And then we lagged it. So we moved that first observation to the second date. And then we lost that first row. It's gone. Um, other, other programming languages don't do that. So where time series is right now, instead of conflating NAN with missingness or implement the data frames NA type, time series just, just tosses these consumed values into um, outer space. Some packages, though, that use time series don't have this luxury of, of being able to use that. So they actually have some missing data. So they have to actually introduce NAN's placeholders. And like we mentioned earlier, this is exactly how Panda handles this. So here's uh, the Quandle package. Uh, you can uh, use that as well. This is, I got class four <coughs> milk features. And um, this has got a lot of missing data. So that's always a good example. But um, if you were just to eliminate every row that had NAN or missingness in it, you wouldn't have any data at all. Well, you can see the cell price. You might actually have something there that you might be useful to. So I'm going to go over really quick here um, how time series and R <coughs> are um, implemented. Um, I'm going to use an example XTS from R and uh, Python's pandas. Here's the R code to duplicate um, the object that we're using. That was the open, high, low, closed object. It's quant mod and then get symbols call. And then pandas code to duplicate <coughs> uh, this code right here. And you can see um, it's, I'm not taking the head of the date, I'm taking the zero and through the third observation, which is really not quite intuitive, but okay, that's how pandas is. It's zero index. So. I've also noticed the volume on, on these. Notice how the volume is depicted. So the volume here is depicted similarly. Um, I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, both XTS and Pandas also <coughs> support date strings for subsetting data. So you can so for time series, you pass a string, it's only going to give you a column. In XTS and Pandas, you can pass in a um, ISO compliant string of dates. So it would be 2001-01-05, for example, will give you the date. Uh, time series is not going to it's taking a pass on this. It's convenience. And, um, even ours XTS package doesn't do error checking for this. So if you were to pass 2000-1-5, it would, it would fail silently. It wouldn't give you that date. It would give you the entire data set. 
because it's not you need you got to proceed the zeros for the one on the five. So we're taking a pass on that for now. Um, they also this is what um, time series does not do. Um, they preserve the dates that were consumed by shifting or calculation. So you can see that there's the NAs from the R XTS package. We did the shifting or the lagging, as it's called an R, and it's called a time series. And that date where nothing, there should not be an observation because it's a lag, they just put NAs. So to make things even more confusing, uh, Pandas does the same thing, but they use NANs for that placeholder. So uh, that just adds to the confusion. But I think I, time series just don't amaze that because it's not missing. It's just not, there's, there's not supposed to be anything there. So you shift it. Um, so going back to that, um, showing that big uh, uh, int, both XTS and Pandas show floats disguised as integers when they are converted from floats, or two floats from integers to fit an array. So obviously they're all floats in that array, but they're showing as ints. Um, time series by default doesn't do that. It shows um, it shows floats as floats, and, but I put in a little thing. I really want. I like that little feature. I put uh, something you can modify that with. You can also modify how many decimals are displayed. It's just a small file called dot time series rcjl, and just to find different con constants here, and you get the same result right here. It'll show the, the um, float as an int, and also get the report decimals. So um, it lives in the Julius Stats organization, and special thanks to Jacob Quinn. Unfortunately, he's not here. Uh, he worked on the dates package, and time series uh, depends on that. We can have one question. Deep your rabbit. Okay, thank you. So, so yeah. you do you support time series over things that are not dates? Say, if you were measuring every minute. Uh, well, yeah, that's planned. <coughs> um, right now, we just got dates. The, the dates package is, is still a little, it's, it's, still, it's still being formed, actually. Okay. So, yeah, it's, we're that close to implementing it, we'll get it quite in there. But we'll have date, we'll have date time there, too, as well. Okay. So, it's more cool. yeah, That's clearly a good objective. All right, thanks.